Hello, I'm Dr. Laith Farjo. I'm an orthopedic surgeon who specializes in advanced arthroscopic surgery and shoulder surgery practicing in Brighton, Michigan. Today I wanted to talk about calcific tendonitis. Calcific tendonitis is not quite as common as rotator cuff problems, uh, but can be commonly seen in women in their 40s and 50s. It does happen in men as well. It presents with shoulder pain that can often be quite severe, and usually we do not note any trauma. I'm going to present a case of a 46-year-old patient of mine who presented to me with severe left shoulder pain. She had no history of trauma and had failed various treatments, including treatment with nonsteroidal anti-inflammatories such as Motrin or Aleve, steroid injections, and physical therapy. This is an x-ray of her shoulder. You can see the red arrows pointing to the calcific deposits within her rotator cuff tendon. Here you can see arthroscopic video of the inside of her shoulder. I'm using a spinal needle to stimulate the rotator cuff, basically poking holes into the rotator cuff, to try to find the site of the deposit. You can see how inflamed her rotator cuff is. All that red tissue is inflamed tissue in, of the rotator cuff tendon. This is a knife now that I'm using to incise the tendon at the site of the calcium deposit. And here you can see the calcium being expressed from her rotator cuff tendon. That's the white stuff that you see. It has the consistency almost of toothpaste. And we're going to get this out of her tendon to relieve her pain. You can see there's a close-up of the white calcific deposit within her supraspinatus rotator cuff tendon. This device I'm using here is a motorized shaver. It's going to basically eat up that calcium deposit and suck it out of the shoulder joint. Everything that we do in arthroscopy is underwater, so you actually will see things floating through the screen. Uh, there's suction attached to that motorized shaver, and it's going to suck that tissue right out of the joint. As you can see, her calcific deposit is quite large, and we're removing a piece of the rotator cuff in which it resides, and we're going to have to reconstruct this later after we get out all the calcium. I'm now going to use a motorized burr to abrade the bone, the humerus bone, so that I'll be able to reattach that hole that I made in the rotator cuff when I had to take out the calcium deposit that was within the rotator cuff tendon. Uh, so this allows bleeding to come from the bone, which will allow the tendon to heal properly. Here again is the shaver being used from a different angle to continue to get out more of this calcific tendon debris. So removing the calcific deposit has left a big uh, hole in the rotator cuff, and now we have to repair it. So first we're going to start by inserting a suture anchor. Uh, this is almost like a, a little drywall anchor that we insert into the bone. It's made out of a special type of plastic, and it has sutures attached to it. Uh, so at first I make the hole for the anchor. Now you can see the anchor is going to come in here in a second. It's a screw-in type anchor, uh, and it has uh, two different colored blue sutures attached to it. This anchor sits inside the bone and is flush with the bone. Uh, the patient will never feel it, uh, and it's a very small anchor that does not show up on x-rays, nor does it set off metal detectors in airports. Here you can see the two sutures attached to the anchor and we're going to use those to reattach the tendon. Uh, in the center of the screen you can see the hole that was left by removing the calcium deposit. Now I'm going to use a special instrument to pass those sutures around the tendon and reattach the tendon back onto the greater tuberosity of the humerus where it belongs. I retrieve the sutures from outside of the body and then tie a special knot called an arthroscopic knot that's a sliding type of knot that we then use to slide into the body and then reattach that tendon back down on the bone. Uh, you can see here we try to cinch it down very tight so that we get that tendon back exactly where it was supposed to be. And then we tie several other knots to lock it into place. Uh, there are actually seven or eight knots in this particular knot just so that it doesn't unravel. Uh, you see there also that other darker blue suture. We're going to use that and pass that around the tendon as well uh, so that we get a very solid repair. After passing both sutures and tying all the knots, we cut the excess suture, and here are the two remaining knots that are left behind with the tendon reattached back on the humerus where it belongs. This is a post-operative picture taken about six weeks after surgery. You can see that calcific tendon deposit that we saw in the early preoperative films is no longer there. At this point, the patient has very little pain, and the three small half-inch incisions that we used to do the surgery have completely healed over. 
post-operative care routine involves placing the patient in a sling for four weeks. However, we begin passive range of motion exercises immediately, and patients are able to use their hand for things such as writing, driving, computers, when they feel safe. Uh, physical therapy usually lasts about two months. Typically, the treatment is complete by three months from the date of surgery, and the outcomes are excellent. Recurrence or complications from the surgery are very rare. In summary, this type of surgery, arthroscopic surgery, is an excellent treatment for people with calcific tendonitis who have failed treatment by other methods such as injections or physical therapy. Thank you.